Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of their faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading this morning is from the third book of Acts. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made you walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over to be rejected in the presence of Pilate though he had decided to release him. But he rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And he killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong whom we see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect help in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our song this morning is called for. We will read of this by whole birth. Answer me when I call, O thou art defender of my cause, and set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. 
Curse the man and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil be drink. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Our second reading is from First John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, and we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who lies in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. It's the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. 
Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. (coughs) Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Are witnesses of these things. Luke 24, 48. In the days following Jesus' crucifixion, it seems as though the disciples are a little on edge. It's completely reasonable. The events over the past few weeks have been unimaginable. They're attempting to process it all. I imagine they were experiencing some grief as well. Jesus had prepared them for the work that they were to do and spoke to them of this work following his death. But like any group who has experienced the death of a leader, I imagine that they're sort of in a wilderness phase themselves. They're likely attempting to understand for themselves just how they fit into this whole preaching thing and teaching thing and working to garner up the confidence to do the work for which Jesus had prepared them. And then Jesus appears to them. This past week on the news has been filled with the Derek Chavon trial. You cannot turn on the news without hearing it. Many, many witnesses have been called. Witnesses testify of what they've seen and heard, what they know to be true from their perspective. It's interesting the parading of so many witnesses. The lawyers are trying to get them to contradict them. It's their job. This person's expert testimony says this. This expert contradicts the other person's testimony. Then a jury has to search through all the expert testimony and decide for themselves what is or is not true. Our gospel text today ends with Jesus addressing his disciples and saying, You are witnesses. Jesus' address to the disciples is not, you will be witnesses, not, please be witnesses, not, consider being witnesses if you have time. No, you are witnesses of these things. We are witnesses. As it turns out, witnessing is not voluntary, but a state of being. Of course, exactly to what things we witness witness requires some interpretive imagination. Perhaps these things is the real bodily resurrection of our Lord. Perhaps these things is the content of Jesus' own confession, the 
suffering of Messiah rising on the third day, the proclamation of repentance and forgiveness of sins. Or perhaps these things is the entirety of Jesus' ministry. After all, Jesus' whole life was witnessing to the holistic character of God's salvation. And then there is an Acts account by Peter, who is also part of our much dear reading today. To this we are witnesses, Acts 3.15. The people of God in Acts are being propelled forward by the empty tomb to tell through words and deeds what they have seen and what they know. And they know the same things that we know. So the big question is, is what does it mean to be a witness? What does it mean to proclaim? Jesus says repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations. It's an important command. Faith groups take it seriously as they should and as are we are commanded to by our Lord. Repentance and forgiveness is to be proclaimed. We are clear on what the instruction is, but how are we to best go about doing it? Bishop Porter Taylor is going to offer a class this spring for clergy and a class for laity if they're interested in evangelism. I have to say that I wasn't very excited to hear the title of this class. Evangelism can drum up so many negative connotations in my thinking of browbeating someone to Christ. But this is not what this course is. Bishop Taylor is teaching this course with the idea that evangelism is really just about telling our story. It's about bearing witness to those things that we know. It's the telling of our stories that, and how our lives have changed and people are going to Christ. The early disciples had an empty tomb to motivate them to get them out into and we have the same thing. So the question is, is what are we waiting for? Are we waiting around for a more grandiose revelation? Have we forgotten what Christ did for us? I don't think so. That's why we're all gathered here this morning. But what are we waiting for? What more do we need? And what are we afraid of? Jesus and Peter remind us that while we're busy expecting another miracle to come our way, our silence, our looking the other way, our inaction also testifies and values. How often we forget that our words and deeds or lack thereof are indeed giving witness to how we imagine God to be. And we might want to stop and consider just what those words and deeds are saying about God. Hearing that we are witnesses may not necessarily be good news for everyone. We remember how often we've defined our identity. We remember how often we have deferred testimony to others. We remember how often we have determined that our witness wouldn't make a difference anyway, so why bother? But in so doing, we deny the truth of who we are and who Jesus needs us to be. We give up vows about God that are not enough people to get to hear or experience. And we forgo the fact that we are never not giving witness to God. That's the rub. We are witnesses. And not only who we are, but also how others see God to be. We are witnesses points to our calling as well as our commitment to it. We are witnesses gives witness to our own self, our own faith, and our own belief. And that's the hardest truth. Perhaps we don't believe in the identity that God has given us. Don't believe that God needs it. Don't believe that others will see it. And don't believe that it actually matters. Defining self and being clear about who we are as a people, as a congregation, as individuals is one of the greatest gifts we can give to those around us. We are witnesses does not depend on our acceptance or agreement or approval. We are witnesses does not depend on our readiness or recognition or responsiveness. We are witnesses just is. And that is what Bishop Taylor's class will be about, I suppose. That since we are witnesses, how do we best tell our story? How do we best communicate our story to the world around us? There are good witnesses and there are bad witnesses. 
Witnesses usually go through hours of deposition by good lawyers to make sure that they say only the things that would be helpful to the case and not harmful. Witnesses can hurt your case or they can help your case, as we see in the Jared Kavan trial. That we are witnesses just as we are is the good news. Left to our own devices, we make up every excuse imaginable to relinquish such responsibility. We convince ourselves that more qualified patients could more certainly justify this calling. We find other fissures through which to escape this location. So rather than continue in our ceaseless attempts to convince ourselves that we have a choice, that we can carry out this occupation just as soon as we are adequately prepared, that we can graciously or even politely and respectfully dispute God's claim on us, why not try it on and see what it feels like? Wear it around, maybe even with gladness in your heart. Witnessing is not optional. It's not an intermittent activity of faith. It's not something that you can decide to do one day and resolve to take the next day off. It's constant. It's a way of life. It's who you are. Let us be mindful of the kind of witnesses that we are. Amen. Stand with me as we recite together the words of the Nazis. We believe in God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten, not made, but one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and not decided. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, and he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> people throughout the world, for our bishops, Michael, Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, for Jennifer, our priest, for this gathering, for the clergy and congregations of St. Mark's Lutheran and St. Patrick's Coles Church, and for all members and people, pray for the church. We ask your prayers for peace goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. We ask for your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any kind of need or trouble. We pray for those on our intercession list. Linda, Holly, Howard, Carol, Christine, Susan, Riley, Michael, Mary Ann, Lincoln, 
Jackie, George and Marnie, Debbie, Nancy, Joan, Mary, Arthur, Hillary, Jim, Brenda, Randy, Kelly, Scott, Tim, and Deborah. We ask your prayers for those serving in the military, especially Zachary, Kelsey, Katie, Terry, Holly Ann, Nicholas, and John. We ask your prayers for all who seek God for a deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found. We ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. We ask your prayers and thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, including Judy Burnett, Carly Knight, Jeff and Patrick Burnett, Bob Richards, and Anna Jeff. Praise God for those in every generation. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own way. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And God Amen. also Amen. with you. Amen. all here this morning and for us to gently be regathering such as it is slowly week by week we'll be able to add more things um, with the bishop's permission to the hymns and such hopefully it will be forthcoming the best we can um, we are going to do a new church directory that we're going to produce in-house since we've had so many changes so rachel wesley is going to have volunteered after services for the next two weeks april 25th and may 2nd Take pictures of you after the service. So wear your Sunday best and your pretty ones. So find a pretty Azalea and take a picture of me so we can compile. So tell your friends and family if you can make it one of those two Sundays, that would be great um, so we can see your family directory. If those two Sundays aren't going to work, we'll try to find another time and try to snap a picture of it for our directory. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
cause the new light to shine in our hearts, to get the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we pray for you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may bear the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our son. By him, and with him, and in him, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The mind is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Christ, our Passover, and sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance of Christ died for us and feed on them in your hearts with thanksgiving. Uh -huh.
Let us go forth into the world in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. 